2018 AP Macro FRQ number one. Uh, the economy is in a recession. Oh, I can't write with that color. The economy is in a recession. Draw a correctly labeled graph of long run aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and show current price level, PL1, and output as Y1. So, long run aggregate supply. Short run aggregate supply. We're in a recession. Price level on the vertical, real GDP on the horizontal. Here's our aggregate demand curve to the left of full and down. That's full employment, right? So we have to be to the left of full employment, showing the price level lower and output lower. PL1, Y1. This would be YF. And they usually ask us to do YF, so we're just going to do it. Um, all right, now assume for B, I think we've done that, A, all finished. Now assume the Eurozone, a major trading partner with the U.S., enters into a recession. What will be the effect on the United States exports to the Eurozone? Well, uh, if the Eurozone is now in a recession, they don't have as much money as they used to have, so they're not going to buy as much of our stuff. So we would simply explain that as exports obviously are going to decrease. Now you would want to write out decrease, don't use an arrow, but I don't have much space. What will be the effect of the United States exports to the Eurozone? Uh, we won't be as exporting, they won't be buying as much stuff, so our exports to them will go down. And we just need to explain that clearly like that. I think that'll be fine. On your graph in Part A, show the effect of the change identified in Part B1 on real output of the U.S. So, if we know our exports, we're already in a recession. They told us that. And then now our major trading partner goes into a recession too. Wouldn't we assume that our aggregate demand is going to shift to the left even further as exports go down? They don't tell us. We can see that output, real GDP, would fall. Showing, they want you to show the effect. So you want to have an arrow, maybe a Y2, showing that it even fell even further. Uh, I could do a PL2. That would be okay also here, I think. What will be the effect of the change identified in Part B2 on unemployment? Well, price level went down. Output went down. Anytime output goes down, we're making less stuff. So unemployment would have had to go up. So unemployment would have increased. We could just write that. I don't need, we don't need to even need to explain it. We just write increase beside the problem. Label it number three or whatever. C, assume the Eurozone recession causes a decrease in the demand for US dollars in the foreign exchange market. Uh, will the euro appreciate, depreciate, or remain unchanged against the dollar? So, understand that if one side depreciates, let's say this is the supply of dollars, the demand for dollars, uh, we would have dollars on the vertical, quantity of dollars here, and then uh, the euro, I'm just going to use an E to the dollar, and the demand for dollars decreases. They're not buying our stuff, so they don't, they don't need to exchange their currency. This is obviously going to drive down the value of the, um, of the U.S. dollar. People don't want it as much. So inside the Forex, inside our Forex here, the demand for dollars is decreasing, right? That implies that on the other side, uh, in the Eurozone, right, that their value of their currency or their Euro would appreciate. And we just seem to know that if the value over here is going down, relatively the value must be going up over here. If our currency is getting weaker or the value is going down, their currency must be relatively stronger. So I would say the euro would appreciate. Uh, and I think we could have just explain that in that exact way. We would say as the value of the U.S. dollar falls, relatively the euro would appreciate uh, against the dollar. Do I need to write that out? I hope not. That explanation would be an extra point. Remember, just saying it appreciates is one point. The explanation would be a point, too. So make sure you explain that as one value goes down, the other one would increase. I'm wondering if they want us to talk about 
what would happen here. Um, I'll have to think about that. Maybe I'll come back to it. Draw correctly the graph of the foreign exchange market for dollars and show the effect of the decrease in demand. Okay, we did that. Uh, D, assume the United States implements a combination of expansionary fiscal and monetary policy in the absence of complete crowding out. What will be the effect of these policies on the following? So we have a combination of expansionary fiscal and monetary. We, we need to know there's a causal chain of thinking here. Fiscal policy, well, let's say expansionary would be government spending, could be also taxes going down. That's going to cause consumption to go up, which makes aggregate demand go up, which makes the price level go up, which makes real GDP go up, which makes output go up, which makes unemployment go down. So that's our fiscal expansionary policy. We also have monetary expansionary policy, which in this situation would probably be to buy bonds. But that's going to make our money supply go down, which makes our nominal, oops, let's reverse that. Money supply would not go down. Monetary policy, if they're buying bonds, the money supply goes up, more money in the economy, that drives down the nominal interest rates. When interest rates go down, how does that affect investment? Obviously, if interest rates are very low, people, there would be more investing because they're going to take out more loans. So investment goes up, which makes aggregate demand go up, price level go up, output, oops, real GDP. I do it the same way like a child every time. Uh, output goes up unemployment would go down. So now we have both of our causal chains of thinking for fiscal and monetary policy. What's going to happen to aggregate demand in the U.S.? We can see that it would go up with fiscal and it would go up with monetary. So it's going to increase. What's going to happen to the price level? Well, if aggregate demand is going up, price level has got to be going up. So we know that. Interest rates, tricky, right? Um, the understanding is we can see clearly what's happening to monetary policy uh, with interest rates. Um, interest rates, we know the nominal is going down, so we also know the real interest rate is going down also. Uh, also, we know price level is going up. If price level is going up, you know that makes real interest rates go down. So we know that clearly due to monetary policy, uh, real interest rates. We also need to know that when government spends, just you should just know it, you can make sense of it, but when government spending goes up, real interest rates have to go up. Hmm, tricky. Why would that happen? Let's talk about it. Uh, it's the idea of crowding out, and we really want to use a supply of loanable funds graph here to make sense of it. Because you hear it in my voice that I wasn't sure that that was going to go up until I did it. Um, so this is a real interest rate on our loanable funds graph. I'm going to get rid of this. No, I'm going to get rid of the Forex stuff here. So what we understand is that when the government spends, they have to borrow. You might as well just assume this. They're never taking in enough tax dollars. When the government is spending, it has to be borrowing. Think of it as borrowing from the loanable funds market or the banks. I like to just think of the loanable funds market as just being talked about as the money in the banks. If the government borrows from the loanable funds market, is it taking money out of the bank? It's borrowing, right? So what's going to happen to the supply of loanable funds? Obviously, if the government's borrowing, it's taking money out of the banks. The supply of loanable funds has to decrease and the real interest rate would go up here. So if the government is spending expansionary, we know real interest rate is going up. That'll work with taxes going down also. Even if taxes go down, that means the government's not taking in as much money. Therefore, it's still going to have to borrow money. So it works expansionary-wise with both of these. Uh, I tend to always just think of it as government spending. I have this in my brain, always in my brain. Well, most of the time. Um, so I just know this, but it's easy to explain it also. So when the government spending real interest rates going up, that's fiscal policy, but monetary says they're going down. So we would say that the this is probably indeterminate. Um, they might, I don't, I haven't looked at the answer. So maybe they say stable. 
stable, indeterminate. Uh, we don't know which one's having the bigger kick. Is government spending driving it up higher than the Fed is lowering it? We don't really know. So we would just explain it that as government spending increases, it's going to drive up the real interest rate. And as the Fed um, increases the money supply with their expansionary policy, they're going to drive down the real interest rate. Uh, therefore, it's indeterminate. I think we would be okay explaining it like that. All right, guys, that was quick. Um, be safe. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.